Here's three ways to improve your trading. Let's go with number one, first of all. And the first one I would say, a way of improving your trading is to spend time trying to gauge market context. So what a lot of wannabe or would be or, or early stage traders uh, spend an inordinate amount of time doing is looking for strategies okay so they're looking for a strategy which gives them an entry and an exit oops there we go an entry and an exit and a given win rate preferably something above 60 percent win rate but before you get to that then or, or as part of your strategy then gauging market context could really help with your entry techniques so what i mean by market context is to just go out to the higher time frames i've got a chart of the new zealand dollar here so quite quickly just by going out to a monthly chart of this it gives us a completely different market context of what the daily chart may be uh, looking like so trying to ask trying to um put in place a top-down approach to your trading Whatever the time frames are you trade off, it doesn't matter whether you're trading off a five minute chart, well, you should be looking at what's the market context of the hourly and possibly the four hour chart, even if you're going to be trading off a five minute chart. And it's the same in this example here. I'm looking at a five minute, sorry, a daily chart, but what's the market context here? We can, I can zoom out and get a, a context here and start to identify um, resistance zones, support zones, trend lines, all that sort of stuff that helps us to deliver, um, to get market context. Because once we've got market context, then we can say, right, actually, I only want to be looking for trades on the long side, or I only want to be looking for trade setups on the short side. And then you employ your strategy on that basis. So that's number one. Number two is to both log uh, journal or log um, it, your, your trades into a journal and more importantly review too many traders um, they uh, assess how they're getting on by their p p and l by their by their p and l and that's the wrong way to look at um, your trading because just because you've had a losing trade or a few losing trades does does that mean that they're bad trades not necessarily. They might have been absolutely good trades. They just haven't worked out. So it, you need to spend less time deciding on whether you're doing well or not based on your P&L and more time logging your trades and then doing a regular review. So, for example, if you're a day trader, you would log your trades all week and probably do a review at the uh, you know, once a week at the end of the week. Um, if you're a swing trader, then you'd probably do a review probably once a month. Now, what do you do in that? So when you log your trade, so you log, you know, the entry prices, all of that normal information and what the strategy and the entry technique was that you were looking at at that time. Um, but also you need to log, you know, your mindset at that time, how you were feeling at, towards the trade, how you're feeling based on prior trades, whatever, just your overall uh, psychology at that stage. When you come back and do your review, then you can, with now, with the benefit of hindsight and a bit of time, you can go back and look at the charts and say, actually, yeah, that trade there, I jumped in, I was a bit too keen to get into that trade, or I was too keen to bank profits on this one. And that acts like a personal mentor to you. So reviewing is like having me sat next to you, because that's the sort of thing that I would do. I'd say, right, okay, let's have a look at your trade log. And then I would be saying, OK, well, why did you take that trade there? Or what was your thought process around this one? And that's it's amazing what you will find when you do regular reviewing of your trades, because then what you'll see is, oh, I've had all these trades here in my in my log. But if I hadn't have taken that one and I hadn't have taken that one, actually, my P&L would have been materially different. So logging and reviewing, you must log your trades and regularly review them. And lastly, number three um, is going to be to work on your mindset. And so too many traders 
spend, as I've already said, an inordinate amount of time trying to find the holy grail of trading strategies. And there isn't one. I can, I've been trading 27 years. I'm a professional money manager. I'm regulated here in the UK. Um, there isn't a holy grail trading strategy. There's lots of people who have trading strategies that work really well for them, um, but it's not a singular sort of holy grail. Uh, where most people go wrong is they'll have a strategy which might be perfectly fine or an approach that might be fine, but actually it's their mindset that messes them up. So, for example, um, I had a really good example just this week from a trader. If I can get rid of the pen for a little bit. Uh, let's just do this and then just move the chart over. It's a classic. Um, the trader was um, buying a pullback. So the trader had had a really good run, banked profits up here. Um, but interestingly, the backstory to this is, is so it had a really good run in this in this trade on this is on a daily chart. Bank profits and uh, but the backstory is that those profits, all they did was paid for the prior drawdown. So it brought his account back to break even. It's a fairly new trader. Um, and then as soon as the market started coming down, he thought, oh God, I sh maybe I shouldn't have banked the profits. Right, I'll jump back in. And then jump back in with oversized, oversized, with too much risk on. And then all... <laughs> All of a sudden, it becomes a bit of a car crash, and then you know it carried on pulling back a bit more. So he got stopped out. At least he had stops in place. And then so I was thinking, oh, I need to get in again. And it became a real old mess through here because he was over trading through here. So um, basically, didn't have a uh, maybe a clear enough plan of action, and got emotional there. So it was his his mindset. There was not. There's nothing wrong with buying on a pullback. <laughs> that actually, it's a very good way to approach the market. But you can see how someone who, if your mindset's not right, that you can start to panic into positions, then panic out of them, then start over trading. Oh God, it's going to turn now. Right, I'll take another trade. And all of a sudden, he's just done way too much. And yet, there's actually nothing wrong with what the market was doing at that point, just doing a pullback. And yet, his own mindset messed him up. So if more traders spent more time working on their mindset, then they would be better off because you can have an approach, but if your mindset isn't there and you're making decisions based on what, a prior drawdown or your P&L, then um, it's likely those decisions are not going to be the correct decisions. So please spend more time on mindset. I would say it's the 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of your time should be on mindset and 20% on the technical element. Obviously, you have to learn the technical element when you're newer to trading. But once you've learned the technicals, you know, that doesn't go away. You're still always uh, assessing the market and, and whatnot. But, um, but more of your time should be spent on becoming the best trader that you can be. And that is by focusing on the mindset, because the more that you can focus on the process of trading, your P&L will end up taking care of itself. Have a lovely Saturday. I'll see you in the week.